Hi, my name is Solomon Kwashi. I'm from Ghana. Uh, the name of my company is Spectrum Cobblers. Spectrum Cobblers is a shoe shine and repair service business. Well, I was suddenly unemployed. And shoe shine service is something that I'd already thought about. I mean, it's something I'd written down when I was in university. Um, I was keen on the concept of running a business that didn't really focus on an area where most people who have been to school were concentrating. I wanted, first of all, I thought that um, it was something that people were taking for granted. I mean, fundamentally, if you look at the numbers, everybody wears clothes, shoes, eats, gets sick and dies. Those are like, nobody walks barefooted unless, even homeless people need shoes. So I figured that, well, there's a big number in shoes and probably doing a business in shoes will probably be a very, uh, provide a solid income. So I'd written it down, but when I became unemployed and I was compelled to take it seriously and then start open inspection covers, yes. We provide a wide array of services but we focus on, an, on, on the areas where nobody else in the country I know does the same or anything similar. For instance, we recolor shoes. We can, and in, under recolor, we can refix your old color back onto your shoe when the colors get faded, or we can change the color of your shoes completely. We do that for suede, leather, and fabric shoes. Um, we can also, we can stretch the size of your shoes, we can decrease if the shoes are a little uncomfortable. If they're too big for you, we can make them a little tighter. We, we do the standard services also, we re -sew. We can, people come to us with a very a unique problem where maybe you have um, one, one feet that is a little, let me see, your leg itself is a little longer than the other the other leg, yeah. So we can do, um, we can refit the sole of your other foot so that aesthetically it looks like both of your foot are the same length. Um, so yeah, those, those, that's the kind of service that we provide. Ghana is an interesting place to start a business because the problem starts right from the beginning. And if you say main, all the problems seem like main problems in Ghana. And now, uh, like, I mean, to register a business in Ghana, when you get to the Registrar General's office, it seems like it should be straightforward and easy. And then you suddenly realize that it's a maze of complications that are intentionally put in your way to allow you to start spending money that you have no intent to spend. I mean, it technically costs about three times what it should cost you to start a business in Ghana, to register it. That's the first main problem. Then the second main problem is paying your taxes. And when it comes to, I mean, this, this problem makes no sense really because you voluntarily go to the tax office to pay your taxes and nobody there seems to care or has any intention of making your life any easier. So you can't even be intentionally and purposefully patriotic. Like it's, yeah, it's, the standard is against being patriotic. Every, every bone in your body tells you to let this, like this is totally rubbish, just leave it alone and then just go and mind your own business. And then three, logistics. Our logistical problem is insane. I mean, the, the overhead on logistics is terrible. For instance, in my business, Delivery becomes a fundamental part of my business because a customer comes to my, comes to my, my uh, or phones our shop. When a customer phones the shop and wants to refurbish their shoe or fix their shoe at a cost of maybe 30 CDs, and you need to pick up the shoes from their residence and bring it to the shop and then send the shoes back at a cost that's around 40 CDs. If if I outsource that service, that means that the company I'm outsourcing it to is making more money than I am on the profit margin. And if I try to do that service in-house, 
the responsibility of ensuring the rider and making sure that the rider is safe all the time, I mean, has presented us with enormous challenges in the past. The real issue is we don't have um, an Uber for motorbikes or an institution that is responsible that provides a safe, reliable logistical service in that area. And so that's problem number three. Problem number four is really any kind of funding because no institution in Ghana, period, supports startup. Then might, you might hear of advertisements and companies that say that they fund. there's zero institution in Ghana that provides any kind of help to startups. And then number five is government's intentions. I mean, there's a lot of policy talk of um, laws and things that are supposed to make starting a business easier in Ghana. Fundamentally, none of that works and there's no institutions that are enforcing these rules. So yeah, those are the five main challenges that I faced in starting my business. Now, these are obstacles. And I mean, it has no bearing on whether you are going to have to successfully make your business work or not. They are in your way, whether you like them or not, and you just need to figure out how to go around them. The best thing to do though, and I recommend this strongly, is to figure out how to, not to go around them, but to go through them. Because if you go around them, you realize that you'll be going around them for years, for instance, taxes. If you don't pay it and you go around it because it's frustrating, then you realize that in two years and in three years and in four years, you have to come back and you'll just be going around in circles around taxes. So just, you know, just make the decision to no matter what, go through it and then solve that problem right from the beginning. But it is incredibly challenging, very challenging, yeah. When I close my eyes and imagine five years time, what I see is my company's name becoming synonymous with shoes. So if somebody says, I have a problem with shoes, and it doesn't matter where in Ghana they are, I, I, I would prefer if my company's name is what comes into their mind. I mean, in Ghana, when people see, when people want to talk about a good toothpaste, it's almost synonymous with Pepsodent. I want Spectrum Cobblers to be the Pepsodent of shoes. So that's how I see my business in five years. I mean, that's the short version. Ah, the advice is simple, just start. Because it's so frustrating, and you need to understand this before you start, you are your own, in the beginning, you are your own accountant, you are your own um, chief finance officer, you are your own overseer in the shop, you are your own, whatever you do, you are everything in the beginning. And that makes it very stressful. Now, what people don't realize is, and the more time that you take to think about starting, I mean, common sense tells you that the more things that you would learn. Funny thing is that the more that time that you take, like you take to think about starting your business, the more obstacles that you will start to think about and that prevents you or makes you postpone starting. So every time you think that you want to solve this problem before you start, look, you can make, you can go around in circles unless you are not, if you are determined to start, just start. If you start, you'll be, you encounter the problems early and then you fix them. And it's important that you start small because the magnitude of the start that you have will represent the start, like the magnitude of your mistakes in the beginning. So for instance, I start, when I started my business, um, I didn't know exactly what area of the business would be successful. Whether it would be at the standpoint or it will be consolidated at a shop where people will bring their things. Now, so you can start by, if you start big, you might make the wrong investment and then you invest in a specific area of your business a lot and realize that it might have taken a much simpler part of your business for you to be successful. So start small, then make your mistakes small, and then you can take it off from there. Yeah, this is one of the platforms that allows you to experience in other people's, you know, by hearing what other people think about starting a business. And that's always helpful. It is, to think, come to think about it, three years ago, if I had the opportunity to listen to so many other people talk about their mistakes, 
the things that they did right and what challenges they faced, it would have focused my mind more on a few specific things that I should have known when I was starting my business. So absolutely, I mean, I am very, very, I'm pleased to get the opportunity to say to others that this is what I did wrong and this is how I did it right and you choose and then you pick. And so yes, Better Business Africa is one of the opportunities for you to just wake up in the morning and want to start. That's what I think, yeah. It helps you start. When I, when I said start small, this is the mistake that I made. I said, when, I was, when I started my business, I invested a lot of money into shoeshine chairs to put at various points. And it turns out that the area of my business that would have enjoyed the most investment was the consolidating at a shop where people bring their shoes to. And I did not realize the logistical nightmare that will come with having like shop, the uh, stands spread all over the place. It stretched me thin. It almost led to the collapse of my whole business. And it exhausted me so much that I almost gave up. And so I started big. I had to coil back and then focus on small, learn, and then, then try to make the effort to expand. So yeah, the biggest lesson that I have learned is that if you don't know about the business, if you didn't get brought up in a family that was already running that business, if that business is a novelty to you, or even worse, like in my case, it's novelty to society as we are in, then it is key that you start as small as possible and make the smallest mistakes in the same magnitude or on the same scale as you started and then give yourself some time to learn and then you can start you can push in and then go bigger yeah naivety can be a virus that you don't come back from in entrepreneurship